Hello everyone, I hope you managed to count birds in October, big day, grackles and red winged blackbirds showed up at our bird feeders and we were actually quite happy to see them because we hadn't seen them in weeks. There's still been no frost here, as you can see my flower baskets are still going and I haven't been able to finish my vegetable bed that I started on the previous episode. But Halloween is just around the corner and every year there's something I want to talk to you about and I always forget. So this year I'm on it. First, let's talk about pumpkin seeds. We don't do much for Halloween, but we do grow our own pumpkins and we really enjoy carving them with our kids. And our kids are not very picky eaters. They really look forward to roasting pumpkin seeds and eating them as snacks. But to be honest with you, after you've carved three or four pumpkins, you have a lot of pumpkin seeds. So we tend to share them with our feathered friends and squirrels and chipmunks. So pumpkin seeds are totally safe to offer to your birds. They're actually very tasty and they're packed with goodness both for humans and birds. You can serve them raw with pulp, but if you don't have that many birds, they will go rancid. So you can roast them. Basically wash the pumpkin seeds, remove the pulp, and then throw them in the oven until they're about slightly brown, but don't over roast them because they will dry out and your birds won't touch them. If you have a lot of birds, especially cardinals, blue jays, and woodpeckers, you can do a little test. So serve one dish with a roasted pumpkin seeds and the other one with raw with the pulp attached to see what works the best in your backyard. You can also serve pumpkin seeds in your squirrel buster bird feeders. You will have to crush them up though. So roast your pumpkin seeds, cool them down, take a rolling pin and go over them a few times to break them up then mix them with other bird seed and serve them and bon appetit to your birds. And the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about is please be careful how you decorate the outside of your house for Halloween. Birds can get stuck in those fake spider webs. Hi James, I wish I had a dollar for every time I get asked that question by members of the public. Those robins that spend countless hours fluttering at your window are attacking their reflections, believing them to be an intruder in their territory. Every time the bird goes to the window, it sees this other robin and reacts accordingly. I'm really amazed that birds, which are somewhat intelligent creatures on the evolutionary scale, can get fooled in this manner, but they apparently do. That strong territorial reaction is all driven by raging hormones in the bird's bloodstream and usually go on for about two or three weeks or so until those hormone levels subside. The only ways to stop it are to somehow remove the reflection, say pulling the drapes or installing some other temporary covering. Alternatively, you could install some inexpensive bird netting available at a large garden center to keep the birds off the window. Rest assured that the bird is not physically hurting itself other than leaving a lot of bird snot on the glass. What it is doing though is first wasting a lot of time and energy at the window, second forgetting about the other real intruders in its territory and most important, drawing the attention of predators like cats and hawks to itself. Robins and cardinals seem to engage in this behavior the most, but other birds like bluebirds and mockingbirds have been seen attacking the reflections in car side mirrors and even shiny hubcaps. And I somehow doubt that they'll ever adapt to this phenomenon. It's safe to say that one doesn't come across that many blind bird watchers out there. But it's also true that many of the world's best birders probably hear and list more birds by their calls and songs than by seeing them. Take the case of one Juan Pablo Colasso, a Uruguayan who was born blind, but can identify more than 2,000 different kinds of birds by their song. One of his favorite birding places is the tropical cloud forest of the Western Andes in Colombia. Some of his prized singers include the sepia brown wren and the golden crown flycatcher. But the big story is that Juan Pablo and his partners in Colombia have developed birding trails that are helping others who are blind or who have low vision to visit the cloud forests of San Antonio and enjoy the birds of the region. The route consists of six separate locations in the popular Kilometra 18 district, named for its location along a highway that connects Cali with the port city of Buenaventura. It offers accessible rope paths with obstacles removed, tours with specially trained guides, audio recordings of 50 common birds, and even poles with barcodes, which provide short audio descriptions of the birds in the region. This important bird area is home to 300 avian species, and Colasso says it's the first birding tourism route for people with visual disabilities in the Americas. 
One visitor described it this way, it's wonderful because it gives you, as a blind person, autonomy. And when nature is accessible, Colossal says, everyone wins. I bet those of you who live just a tad south of us have eastern bluebirds all year round. Lucky you. Here they are such a treat for us in the spring and summer. And even though I've had bluebird houses up for years, my property has way too many trees so they never even consider coming this way. Fortunately, Paul, the inventor of Squirrel Buster Bird Feeders, lives on the farm and years ago he put up a substantial bluebird trail. So this is where I go to get my bluebird fix and barn swallows and tree swallows as well. Another reason why Paul has so many bluebird boxes is because there's a constant battle between bluebirds and tree swallows to take over those boxes. Uh, tree swallows tend to win more often than not so the more boxes you put up the more chances your bluebirds will have to have at least one or two boxes to themselves. I don't think it's that difficult to identify male and female eastern bluebirds. Males have blue heads and a very vibrant rusty chest whereas females look much duller. Eastern bluebirds love eating insects and berries, but they also happily come to bird feeders that serve hulled sunflowers, dried mealworms and suets. And if you haven't heard it yet, you can serve dried mealworms in your Squirrel Buster bird feeders. Beverly from our customer care mixes dried mealworms with other seeds, serves them in her Squirrel Buster Plus and her bluebirds have been eating there all summer long. She, just like many of you, also says once she added a bird bath, bluebirds have been basically living in it. Both female and male bluebirds are quite territorial and aggressive and they have been seen scrapping with each other. So if you see them attacking reflections, let's say in the car mirrors or in your windows, they are thinking that there is an intruder in their territory. So please make sure to get rid of those reflections. Some eastern bluebirds are migratory and others are not. Those that come to breed here in the north tend to have fewer broods and smaller clutches than their relatives in the south. Here we get really excited if they have two broods per season. It is recommended and the bluebirds tend to prefer birdhouses that get cleaned between two broods but if it's not possible to do that they have been seen reusing the same box with old nests as well. If you live in an area where you have bluebirds all year round but you do get cold snaps, bluebirds are very susceptible to those cold temperatures. So if you can, please have nesting boxes up for them where they can roost during those cold snaps and also continue feeding them dried mealworms and suet to survive those cold temperatures. Did you know that in European folklore, ravens and crows were believed to be witches' familiars? They were the messengers between the living and the dead? Now let's check out the top five of our Ravens and Crows photo contest. Here's the third place, the second place, and the grand prize winner. Well, November, the temperatures are dropping, so our photo contest theme is brrr, it's cold out. All right, everyone, that's it. That's all for now. It looks like it's going to rain on us. Let me know if you test out the two types of pumpkin seeds, the raw and the roasted ones, and which ones your birds like the most. Take care, everyone. I'll catch you in two weeks.